Hi there, it's Deb Carr, and today I'm chatting with Adam Thompson, lead singer of Chocolate Starfish. Thanks for joining me, Adam. My absolute pleasure. Good to be here. Yeah, well, we've got a few things to talk about, but the first thing I wanted to just um, ask about was you guys have been around for a while now, hitting the charts in 1993 with the classic cover of Carly Simon's You're So Vain. What brought the band together in the first place? So we were all in different bands in the uh, late 80s, early 90s that um, all the different players um, were all mates, but we were all in different bands that weren't quite making it <laughs> an impact. And uh, we used to you know, get together for a drink at one of the local nightclubs in Melbourne and um, we sort of all discussed that, uh, you know, we probably had the perfect band sitting right in front of us and that became Chocolate Starfish. Right. Yeah, and it's a great band. And your um, your latest track, "What's Up," which is now my new workout anthem, by the way, was. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it was originally recorded by the Four Non Blondes a year before Chocolate Starfish smashed their way onto the Australian music scene. Now, fast forward to twenty twenty one. What inspired Chocolate Starfish to release this version? So you're absolutely correct. Um, it was just out before your so vain. And we, um, we actually went over to live in Los Angeles. Um, we just recorded your so vain, so it hadn't even been released yet. And we went over there and um, it was probably one of the biggest songs uh, on MTV at the time when we were in this share house in Los Angeles. And uh, I always thought that it was a great song and that, um, you know, Linda Perry was a quirky singer and it was fantastic. And, when we uh, recently reformed, um, we uh, we started doing uh, you know a chorus of it in a breakdown in your so vain. So as a bit of a sing along in some of the big outdoor shows like the Red Hot Summer Tour. And uh, anyway, so it was a chorus sing along, and then and it went so well. I said to the boys, oh, I might try and sing a bit more of the song and see what the crowd does. Anyway, fast forward again, and it was uh, it was such a hit that. Um, live that when we got this new album together we decided that it should be the uh the lead song uh off this brand new album that we've done during lockdown yeah it's it's really catchy as soon as i started hearing it i was up dancing around um in the office here <laughs> so now well, um, i think we've done, we've given it our chocolate starfish spin too like we did with your so vain you know we've given it our own flavor and and I think that's, uh, you know, that's what we're renowned for. So um, hopefully uh, all the audiences enjoy it as well. Yeah, definitely. And I did read that the single version of What's Up went through a few different renditions before the final version was mixed. Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah, it really did. Um, so first, you know, firstly, we did a bit more of a 90s version of it. So it probably sounded a bit more like your Savain, like we play it live and... It was good, but still wasn't right. Then we tried a dance mix of it, and that that wasn't right either. And uh, Tim Henwood, our producer, uh, just took it. He said, "I've got some ideas. I wouldn't mind trying. Let's try this." And uh, it worked so well that it then became the uh, the blueprint for all the, uh, the all the original tracks that uh, will be on the album as well. So it's um, he did a great job of, of finding that that sound, and and I think it still has a lot of that starfish um, '90s sound to it, but it also has a, a freshness to it that uh, that sits alongside contemporary music at the moment. Definitely, and um, is your audience all ages? Like, yeah, look, it is now, and this is interesting because we made a decision about five years ago to start doing some of these classic albums uh, in Starfish way. So we did Battle of Hell and then we did In Excess Kick. And uh, just just before COVID hit, I was in the middle of doing the Bohemian Rhapsody soundtrack uh, concert series around Australia. And we, uh, we've we really picked up fans from all demographics. So if you look at the Bohemian show, I mean, probably a third of my audience was under 25. Amazing, that's great. And and, and, you know, because, you know, then they like the show and then they, you know, they Google what else has Adam Thompson done or what else has Chocolate Starfish done. And then, of course, they then listen to your stuff and and then become, I guess, fans uh, of you as opposed to just fans of that Bohemian Rhapsody show or just fans of that In Excess Kick show, for example. So 
it's been a really smart way to grow our audience. And I think we're probably one of the few bands who are growing our audience uh, in our 50s. So I think it's a, you know, it's been a pretty wise move. So, um, you know, same as doing this, uh, this version of What's Up, it's, it's, it's already going to get, um, you know, people from all, all demographics listening to it now because of that same reason. Absolutely. And so what can we expect from the Beautiful Addiction LP, which is being released on the 14th of May this year? So, yeah, it, it, I think it's the best body of work we've done since our debut Chocolate Starfish album. And it's um, largely because we've, we've been able to spend time on, on the songs and really spend uh, time with each other, uh, even though it was uh, over the internet, you know, passing ideas back and forth during a very long lockdown in Melbourne, mm. that we were able to really work on the tracks and really work on, um, you know, making them the best that they could and you know I always get some ideas from the most bizarre places I don't know where they come from but somehow I get these little messages you need to write a song about that and um, the beautiful addiction actual song which is the title track of the album um, came about as um, I just was subconsciously reflecting on how so many people particularly young ladies are masking themselves up to look like the Kardashians with layer upon layer of makeup and Botox and fake eyelashes and fake everything else and, you know, fake backsides. And I'm thinking, you know, at what point do we get to see and meet the real you? And that became the integrity of that song, The Beautiful Addiction. Um, so, of course, it, you know, it's a bit tongue in cheek, but it talks about, you know, how many layers we, we place upon ourselves uh, in life and and why are we so ashamed or scared to show who we really are and be vulnerable like Renee Brown would say uh, and then there's another song on there um, called God and I Know and it's a song I wrote for my wife uh, almost 20 years ago at our wedding and during COVID I was digitizing some VHSs and I came across the song and the band and I were actually not speaking at the time so the boys didn't come to my wedding and so I just showed him the song as a bit of a here check it out you know here's a bit of fun and they uh they really loved the song and so we recorded that as part of the album as well that's lovely I really like that I love the I especially love this the beautiful addiction what a great message oh look it is and and it's it's something I'm, I'm quite passionate about and um you know vulnerability and and you know really being who you are um and exploring who you are. That's kind of why I left the band even in 98 for that long hiatus because I was the lead singer of a rock and roll band that had had some success, but I had no idea who Adam Thompson was. I just was this almost parody of, of you know, the quintessential rock and roll guy. And um, I just needed to understand, you know, what I felt about life, what I felt about religion, society, you know, could I be a marriable guy? Like all these things that I had no concept of because I've been in a band since I was 18. And um, yeah, that's not, and it's not conducive in a band to exploring all those things. You need time apart. You need time by yourself to grow without those influences so that you can then bring back brand new influences to your, to your loved ones. Indeed. Life is a challenge at times, I must say. It's interesting times at the moment. Yeah, it is. But you know, but it's also how you look at it too, you know. That's why I look at the COVID as being a blessing for us because we wouldn't have had and we probably never will have again um, four months to sit at home and spend days upon days on music. And I haven't had that luxury since I was 22, 23 years of age. It's quite incredible. I can say the same thing about me. I also um, design websites as well, and I've had more work during COVID and seen so many people want to um, reinvent themselves and come up with these great ideas and, and build themselves a new business. So it's been good for a lot of people. It has, and it's you know I think it's 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 highlighted who a lot of us are as people. So those of us who are positive and seek um, that new challenge. It, it's magnified that but those of us who are really negative and always see that the glass is being half full it's really it's really magnified that in some people too 
Yeah. So I believe I believe that's what it's done for us. All right. Well, I've got just two more questions for you. Um, I read you said creating new music is much more than writing the songs. Please explain what you mean about that. By that, I should say. Yeah. So to me, creating creating new music is it's something I was quite passionate about when I came back together with the band and I said, look, I don't just want to be an RSL retiring, you know, here, here they come again for one round of their old hits. Um, whether or not a thousand people bought it or a hundred thousand people bought any new music, it's not important to me. It's, it's a cathartic experience to, to create things. And, you know, talking about the beautiful addiction song as we did before, uh, it's important to me as a writer to get that stuff out. Um, it's how I dealt with the passing of my of my mother back in um, back in the box album uh, in 1995 when I talked about losing my mum and that became the song Motherless. So I think it's really important uh, to create songs that help you deal with life in general. Mm, definitely, that's that's brilliant. I agree with you. All right. So last question: What's ahead for the band for the rest of the year? Oh, well, uh, again, COVID permitting, um, the new album comes out uh, on the 14th of May. We've got, uh, we've got two shows which we're going to announce. They're going to be uh, for super fans to come and, uh, come and listen to the whole album and in, in a couple of venues and we're going to film it and record it for a live doco. Um, uh, we've got some big festivals we're doing like the Big Red Bash, which are going to be super fun yeah. uh and then from august uh, to about november i'm um, i'm resuming the bohemian rhapsody soundtrack uh regional shows all around australia that um will pick up where i left off um, when covid hit back in 2019 so it's going to be a very busy year uh with the new album and uh, and doing some of these concerts as well that's fantastic and i'm sure a lot of people will be looking forward to that after what we've been through for past year and a half or whatever it is now yeah absolutely even dabbling in some of these small we're doing a, a some small shows right now called scale back in victoria alone and mm. you know they sell out so quickly because people are just desperate to get back out and and connect again connect and have a bit of fun <laughs> that's what we need fun. exactly all right that's absolutely brilliant thank you so much for your time i really appreciate it you're welcome i hope it, hope it edits up well for you Thank you. Thanks, Adam. See you later. Bye.